Hey, today we're going to look at an amazing uh, building material. It is uh, concrete Lego blocks. So before we get into that, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps us out. So guys, in the comments, tell us the stuff that you want to see. Let us know what are the things you're struggling with, what are the things that you're looking at, hey, what are the areas that, uh, that you want to see, you know, some solutions that we use out in the field. Hit us in the comments. Let us know the videos you want to see. We don't do these because we're bored. We do these because we really want to help people out. Again, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Guys, one of the things that we do a lot uh, for people is infrastructure on their farm. You know, helping them create fences. And uh, a lot of times we're in the mountainous area, so it requires retaining walls and, and other materials down those lines. And these are one of my favorite materials to work with as far as retaining dirt. Uh, they call them concrete waste blocks, and I'm sure that there's a ton of different names for them probably in other areas, uh, but that's what, that's what they're referred to in our area. And the reason they call them that is when a cement truck returns to the plant uh, and it's got cement left over from a job that they just went and pour, they will pour them into forms, and it's literally the waste concrete. Now, these blocks, and one of the things to note is every concrete plant makes a little bit different block, and so... Uh, if you start with one concrete plant, chances are you're always going to have to use that for, for that wall if you're planning on interlinking them. Even our local concrete plants, even though they're the same company, they actually have a little bit different form, and so uh, we can't use them from a different location of the same plant, which is fine as long as you know that going in. We chose these ones. We like uh, the way that our concrete plant does it out here. Some of them will have a smooth face. They give these a little bit of a rock face. They are not a perfect material. You can see on this block down here that <clears throat> there's a little bit of exposed uh, aggregate in it. That's fine, I don't care, it's a retaining wall. And what we have found is once a little bit of time sets in, uh, you won't even notice stuff like that. But the benefits of these blocks are they're two foot by two foot by four foot. That comes from our manufacturer. And again, that can vary depending on the concrete plant that you've got. That's my preferred size in them because it spans the largest span that we can, but we can still move them and pick them up with our equipment. So the benefits of these are huge. We don't have to have a concrete foundation. We don't have to have a massive footer. We're gonna dig the ground out. <clears throat> We're gonna, I usually try to set them into the ground about you know six inches to a foot into the ground on my first course. It's just gonna be level and we simply pick them up by a hook up top we stack them next to each other and go. We don't bother to use any kind of a French drain or drainage system behind them. Some people don't agree with that and still wanna put gravel behind and that's just fine. But the reason we don't is we don't seal these seams at all. When we pick these blocks up, we set them next to each other. There's plenty of area for water to weep its way out. And so we don't worry, worry about that. <clears throat> but they're giant Lego blocks, so they just lock together. You can see these, these knobs up on top. Well, there's a channel underneath here that these will the, the next row will sit onto on these. So we're able to simply just set our bottom row level, and once that's done, it's as fast as we can pick them up and stack them. Now, it's not like moving Legos. They are 2,000 pounds a piece, and so they're not a light block, but <clears throat> they're amazing at, at retaining. One of the other things that I love about these is if there's a problem later, it's easy to rectify. So we had to run some, uh, some drainage lines uh, through an area that we had already put a wall up on a property. And the nice part about it was this wasn't permanent damage. We walked in, we unstacked them, we ran our drainage line, and then we stacked them right back where they were. Absolutely no harm, no foul, no big deal later on. So today we're gonna to get into, we're gonna go ahead and expand a wall. Right now it's at three courses, they wanna to go to four courses. Now, if we're gonna go up that high, we are gonna use a geotech netting that will actually lay across the top of the block that will extend back into the hillside so that when we backfill dirt on it, it'll help retain the top of that block so the blocks can't be pushed over. You know, there's some argument on whether we need it, whether we don't need it, I'm okay with stacking up to three tall, which is six foot, and not using any of the geotech fabric. But if we're gonna go over six foot, 
100%, we use it. It's cheap and easy insurance. So we're gonna take off, get the excavator, get this loaded up and start expanding this wall. Okay, now that we've gotten this next row, the last row set here, this was an afterthought after, uh, after the client had this wall built and was in and had been here about a year, they decided that they wanted to level out their yard just a little bit more, and so they wanted to come one higher. It's one of the great parts about this block. We simply put the geotech fabric uh, or, or netting underneath, extended back into there, and then we just set blocks on top. So you can see they've had no, this has got uh, some dirt on the bottom blocks. They've got absolutely uh, no rock behind there and they've had no grass or anything. It's been open dirt. Once grass gets established up there or plants, uh, this, will, this will quit bleeding down with the, with the color uh, on it, but you can see it wicks water out of it just fine. We haven't had any issues uh, with, with that and, and it holding hydraulic pressure behind there. Uh, some of the, and we've seen it done in the past, you can look online and see some people actually do a yogurt mix that goes on top of this, it creates a moss and it gives it a very old look. And I don't know what this client will do, but one of the questions that we always get is cost. So I can tell you from a material perspective, these blocks run about $50 a piece. And so this wall here is a little over a hundred feet long, I believe. Um, and it's about $4,500 in, in materials. But in that, we have a block wall, and, and that, didn't in, that did not include labor, uh, but we have a block wall that is eight feet. Uh, while I'm standing, uh, it's about a Barrett backfilled about halfway up, so about seven feet tall. And for $4,500 in materials, is that's, pretty, that's pretty hard to beat. And the great part is it's expandable. You know, they're talking about at some point wanting to expand this wall uh, to go farther into the hillside when, when budget will allow. No problem. We can come back, simply expose our last block, flatten it out, and start stacking again and match them up. So concrete waste blocks, absolutely recommend them.